quick uh let's let's bring ryan up ladies and gentlemen uh welcome back to the show uh, uh good friend good friend of the show probably probably the uh the best investigative researcher and broadcaster in the business ryan christian last american vagabond welcome back to the program sir how are you thank you doing good guys appreciate it always so kind your introductions i appreciate it <laughs> well are you fully vaccinated according to the canadian law fully vaccinated. what does that even mean anymore? that was the key word imagine fully. you're a 12 year old girl yeah well that's a great point that pasta brings up though i mean this is something i keep pointing out just for the record absolutely not like that should even be a question for people to know my work <laughs> it was no, I haven't had a flu shot in like 50, 40 or how long it's been since I was a kid. Anyway, the, the good point, though, is is that I, this is something I think you guys have been covering. I've been pointing out that this this weird evolution and, of course, always to point out was a crazy conspiracy theory until it happened, which is that they would move these, you know, one more booster the next. And and so in U.S. right now, this it's the most convoluted anywhere in the world. It's where you guys know it's uh, you're fully vaccinated with two, but yet you're not up to date unless you get the boosters, they say. So fully vaccinated is an arbitrary, meaningless term now in the U.S. because it means nothing. You can't do the things unless you're up to date, but yet it's, you know, it's like permanently suspended for Twitter. It's a ridiculously in inherently contra contradictory term. But Canada is more interesting too because they're pushing those boosters out further than anybody, it seems like. They're like on number five now. I forget where everyone's at, but it's it's quite incredible because then you find yourself in this weird position where you have to keep getting the next shot, this undefined future, Unless, in, unless you, you know, if you want to engage with the society. Now, was that clip you were playing? Was that uh, uh, Viva Frey speaking? It, it, I don't think it was, but it did sound like it sounded it. like it. it, sounded like it. Sounded like but no, I it, don't think it was. That, it, his that his was, law focus was what me think that too. You know, what's the law? That's what he usually does too. But yeah, I've been seeing a lot of these are the red vests, and a one I posted was an older man. And it was about the app. And I found that to be incredible because we've all been saying that from the beginning, right? It's not just about the vaccines. As even as Kate, um, Catherine Austin Fitz will point out, it's more so in her mind about the infrastructure and look the apps at, and the money control. Ryan, psychically inside of our show doc, the the app clip is the dead ass next thing in the Nice. The it's doc. a good one. Go ahead and play it if you want. That's that's it's a good. great that makes me upset to watch it's because yeah, they're just ignoring his question. Like, what if he's alone? It's like just use hers. <laughs> yeah. So let's wait. Scroll up real quick. Let's get the the uh, can it, yeah. Let's get the text of the tweet here real quick. Canadian Public Health detaining an elderly 86 year old man without a cell phone, unable to use a RiveCan app, who provided proof of his vaccination status. They want the app. Four like shots, you. and he's wearing a mask. He's complying in every way, and he's got proof of his shots. He's like, here are my proof, right here. Mm -hmm. So it's like if it was just about being complying with all of it, then it would be okay. But nope, he's like, got to use the app. It's crazy. Travels on his own, I travel on my own. I have the Arrive Can app, and he does not. Okay. He has his proof of documentation right. showing that he's been vaccinated. Right. That's all that's required. Yeah. No, he has to do the Arrive Can, so all we can put him on to birth count nope. and get done. How come you don't want to do it? Why should what? I have to? Because it's a requirement to get to Canada. What if he was flying by himself? I, I will be flying by myself, and I don't have a cell phone. Yeah. But so what does he do? Put it on hers. No. <laughs> if I'm flying by <laughs> myself, can I do that? Are you guys related? Yeah. 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 So what's the problem with putting it on your account? I don't think I should have to. Why not? What's, what's the Nancy, answer? Nancy, never mind. This is a bureaucracy gone amok. I know. But you know this. That's why you have to do it, right? This is one of the requirements. It's part of the quarantine, right? To get back. Yeah. Wow. Well, let's just, see. You've got, you've got my, you've got my uh, uh, COVID shots. I've had four of them. Okay. You have, you have my passport. Okay. Why not? Let's just do the paperwork and get this over with. Because they want the app. The government wants the app. Let me ask you. No. What's, what's the reason why you don't want to do it? I don't think I should have to. There's got to be a reason to it. Though. I don't think I should have to. It's got to be I'm that, traveling. That this is, is the this reason. Is my phone. It's my app. Okay. I'm just having myself on it. The How is that not scary? Right. One of the scariest things we've ever seen. What's the reason? Why don't you have the app? Well, what the hell? Who the hell are you to tell me I have to get a freaking app? An app. I, I wish that they would have. I mean, I, I get why they're taking the stance. You know, I just shouldn't have to. That's a good enough answer. You don't get to dictate exactly. what my reasoning is. But I wish they would have just continued to focus on the part he didn't want to talk about. Like, you're so you're just pretending. So these people just can't fly if they don't have a phone. Yes, is the answer. Right. And mm -hmm. they don't want to say that. And that's an incredibly important point because it's just the control. 
You know, they always like go back to the very beginning of this, like, oh, just get the thing or just wear the mask, you know, just be and just comply. Therefore, you can do, you know, then you can get on the bus and do these things. They're not forcing you. You can choose not to be involved is the way they played this. But obviously, that's not the case. You know, you can't you you can't live your life without falling into their control structure right now. Leanna Wen did say before that, remember, she said this on national television. I think I saw this on your show. Maybe it was somebody else's, but they, she did say, we have to start making it more uncomfortable for people who don't right. want to comply with all these protocols. Yep. That's what she said. Like, oh, and, and, and we have to put that little carrot on the stick. Tell people, look at all the freedoms they can have if they comply. Yeah, we If you get this too. shot and if you get inside the, the app and, you know, now you're in the system, you get all these freedoms. That people so they keep framing it too in the UK and everywhere else. Like, like, and this is the, the next step in the evolution of how they've already manipulated all those people to thinking that rights are things the government give you, right? That's what they all think already. So now it's just like, well, now you get these freedoms. They're like, oh, how cool we get freedoms. It's like, no, you inherently have those and they're not letting you, I mean, however you'd frame that the right way. They're just not respecting them, I guess, is the right way to say that. What, what kills me is that um, the, the words freedom or liberty or um you know i i guess self-reliance even bad words with negative connotations now like there are people who have like visceral emotional reactions when they see or hear those words because of how they've been weaponized and because of like the the faces that they show you for the poster children of what that means and it's a fucking just master stroke of a propaganda effort to get people to hate the concept of not having the state have a boot on their neck or the constitution itself. Right. I mean, these are all small, small steps they've taken where the very, I mean, we pointed this out. I mean, about 10 years ago. I mean, the idea that that when the moment it got put down on paper, probably long before that, that people that believe too much in the Constitution were potentially dangerous. Like, that's how they viewed that. And so the, the people right now that want to pretend like it's this more important document that we all swear to, yet is completely throw you could throw it away the moment that it contradicts with what the current administration is saying. You know, they, they are believing these things. And, and like to your point about freedom, you know, they would in one conversation be like, yes, it's all about freedom, that like we're spreading freedom around the world. And then, but if you say it in a certain context, it becomes a dog whistle for white supremacists or, you know, whatever they turn it into. And yeah. it's just so frustrating because it's all up here. It's like turning the word regime change into a pro-democracy concept. You know, it's like they, when we say regime change, we're thinking terrible things that were conspiracy theory at one point, but obviously we're real. Now we say it, they think, oh, democracy. Like that's social engineering, right? And so we need to make sure we're understanding the same meaning, not just saying the same word. And it's it's pretty. I mean, it's 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 well done. You got to be honest. The social engineering, it's working to a large degree for a lot of people. Yeah, Montreal uh, mom, right? She's in Canada. She said that we need to re uh, ignite the trucker movement again, and this time find a way to uh, to donate directly to them. I mean, I I do think about the trucker movement, and I kind of you know battle with my my mindset the fact that did something good come out of this or, the, or did it just fall short you know we see all these protests all around the world but what's your thought about what we're seeing all around the world with everybody protesting it we we don't see it in the united states steve kind of pointed it out only if it's team sports do we get in the streets whether it be roe v's way or right. you know my body my choice or whatever the case may be That's but good uh, your thoughts and that's, I mean, that's a good thing to think about, guys. And I don't think I have an answer. I mean, I have my opinions, but why is that? You know, why aren't we doing that? You know, why it's, it's, I think we know. I mean, I think, I do think we're one of the most propagandized nations, if not the most in the world. And so we are just completely immersed in this idea of team sport politics. And it's, it's frustrating. But to the first, the trucker point, and this, it's a good question to think about right now. I think that what, first of all, cross the board. It's a good thing no matter what. People standing up for what they believe in, in a non-political, non, like I guess non-political is not right, but I would argue non-partisan, which I do believe it was. There's plenty of people out there that were just, it was all about freedom. You know, maybe it slanted one way and that's the way things tend to go, but they tried to make it only right and that was the illusion. But no matter what, that's a good thing, right? Even if it turns out that they use it against you and so on, collectively standing together and protesting the thing you don't agree with. That's our fun foundational, you know, we have a right to do that and we should always appreciate that. But to your point, you know, did it end up giving us a positive? Yeah, I, that's a, I, I think it did only because it brought a lot of attention to one, the fact that we can do that, 
That's the Milgram idea of experiment, right? Show people that we have that, that we can do that. And two, that I do think it woke a lot of people up to the fact that they are tyrannical. I mean, for crying out loud, they were attacking average Joe bank accounts. So how, what more do we need to see? That's crazy. And then 30 seconds down the political spectrum, it's like, oh, we need to protect their right to protest abor you know, abortion because they can go out and do this and it's their right, except mm -hmm. these people have the wrong ideas. So we can't let them do that. It just shows you it's subjective, right? And then to the larger point of it all, I and, uh, and within both of these, the trucker and this, I always want to point out how I think it's interesting how in some ways these things seem to be counterintuitive almost, where it's like, we're protesting the supply chain, but then we're shutting down the supply chain. You know, again, I want to stand back and say either way, it's still a right thing to do. They may, you know, whether I agree with the outcome or how it works, but we need to think about how we sometimes fall into what they might want us to be doing. But last point to the larger thing, we should be seeing this everywhere in the world right now. I mean, people should be watching through the streets. We should be, we should be like, I go back and forth on whether I think it's the right thing to like shut things down, you know, to like stand in the streets and stop things because you affect average people that may not need that, want that. It may be harder for them, but I think we should be protesting at places like, you know, at, at the, at the Capitol building. Exactly. I mean, look, that's a contentious thing to say right now because, oh no, we're going to be called January 6th. That's exactly what we should be doing. We should be standing outside these buildings. We should be making it clear. Even if you don't think that makes an effect on them, because it doesn't, I full, wholeheartedly believe they laugh at us when we do that, but it shows the world what we think. Now I, that's one step I always take. I think we need to make it clear to the world that we don't think they represent us anymore. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, I, I couldn't agree with that more. There's, uh, a, a sort of, I don't, there's a disconnect that Americans tend to have where we will look at a, a person from another country and be like, your country does this, your country does. And then when they turn it around and be like, well, your country, we immediately throw our hands up. <coughs> That's not my government. Right. Okay. Well, it's not their government either. And right. that's something that, that we, you know, kind of lose sight of from time to time. Russia's but I mean, they're, yeah, it's a fantastic example. Like, so uh, Iran, Iran, most Iranians don't like their government, but it's the government that they're dealing with because they live in a captured theocracy. And so they're trying to navigate that as best they can. But the average Iranian is like, I am vote for that fucking guy. I didn't, no. Yeah. You know, they had the um, lowest turnout in their last election, too, that they're just throwing their hands up in the air. They're like, well, and now shit. they're on yeah. blockchain for food. Yeah. It's, it seems all of these governments and this is the hard part about it is like, <clears throat> excuse me, <clears throat> when you're taking like a foreign policy point. It's very it's like it's almost like a, you feel driven into defending the how aggressive we know the propaganda has been about these governments in the past. But it's important to think about that where we are now, Russia, Iran, Venezuela, they're all tapped into some way in the direction that we don't want to see this going, the great reset direction, the technocracy to smaller degrees. I would say Iran's a better example, but even Russia, you know, World Economic Forum, young global partner, these things that are Putin specifically, and people dispute that for some weird reason, but it's he's publicly said it many times. But it's very interesting to see that is that they are one end are seemingly pushing back against some things, but are all sort of in lockstep to the larger agenda, which concerns me. But to, to your point about the the you know misrepresenting them, I mean Russia's the you Ukraine Russia. It's it's you know Russia does anything. It's all Russia and everybody, even the people. You know we're banning Russian cats from certain things. Like it's so childishly stupid and obvious that they're doing this based on Russia bad, no matter what. And yet, how dare you conflate these two things over here or in our world or you know it's just everything we are. Like this is the crazy part about uh, it's not meant to be negative against American people. It's about the government and the propaganda that's driven a lot of American people in this position. But we're very childish when it comes to this stuff. We're very we choose to dig in and ignore and be hypocritical. And I think that's all part of the propaganda, but so do other countries, but we have a real problem with that. We are very ignorant to what's going on outside of our borders. That is for sure. But the thing that really also, I just want to get your opinion as too as well, because as we talk about these protests that are in the street, the thing that really just burns my ass is that all these leaders are still in control. You know, I mean, we obviously we see Bojo going out, but he's just going to be replaced by somebody who's interchangeable and stuff. I mean, what is what is the world waiting for to for us to get rid of these psychopaths, to get rid of them, to remove them from power? Are they waiting on us, the United States? I mean, when are we going to see these dominoes fall for real? I love seeing people in the street, but what has really changed? Same psychopaths just making the new laws, same laws and the same restrictions. Yeah. Sri Lanka, that's one example of where the person already stepped down, so I understand it, but there's a lot of weirdness there about whether there's the CIA involved. And, you know, I mean, there's all, that's the hard part about all this because we're so primed 
and rightly so, to, to be a, on guard for the regime change, color revolution concept. And so is that even part of what's happening today? Like, I have a genuine concern that we're all pro, you know, yeah, let's get out. And then we're like, well, wait, are we in the in the middle of these genuine protests? Are they taking advantage and overthrowing governments? I do think that's part of what's happening right now or trying to co-op those movements like they have tried many other places. I mean, the Yellow Vest is probably the only movement I've ever really seen that I don't feel was truly co-opted. They tried the blue vest or whatever those different things. They tried to like come out with their own things, but it's because it was a leaderless movement for the most part. The problem is we find these things where we have these, you know, people jump up and take charge and they're politically driven and then they get co-opted. You know, we see that with everything, you know? So it's, I don't know, it's very hard. To, it's hard to see the actual outcome, but I do think that Sri Lanka is one example of where we see that change. UK was an interesting one. They chose to be, they got pushed back from within their own government. You know, the other side of the coin, essentially, or one of the many others pushing back, but they all just walked away. To your point, it's like, okay, I always make that joke. It's like, so when I hit someone with my car, can I quit my job and be like, are we good? <laughs> Avoid <laughs> criminal activity? It's like, no, they just get to step down in disgrace and we yeah. just go, oh, that's what he deserves. It's like, no, he should be in prison right now for all the choices he made that we know were wrong. You know, he's going to still be in British Parliament too, as well. And right, exactly. <laughs> like said, Andrew, if we get Rishi Sunak, you know, a guy who's going to be worse. So, I mean, yeah, sorry, Steve. No, guy. he's he's a, a he's a World Economic Forum bean counter. Yes, he is. And, yes, and yeah. if you don't get Rishi, you get Liz Truss, or you Pretty get Keir Powell. Starmer. Or Javid is running. He's trying to run as well, right? So Javid, it, Javid did he throw Javid? His, his name in? He's in there. The uh, so. and he's the hell he's the former health guy so that's yeah. really concerning for me i'm like that's the, he's been driving all this right now he has been he's one of the first people that came out and were like boris johnson bad and i can't believe that blah 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 this is the dude who was having a, an open affair in parliament with another member of parliament this is the dude who screwed up and yeah. told the world that there were placebos that were being introduced to the public. Yeah. He's the first guy, health minister to say the word placebo yeah. on the floor uh, of the job at where he works. And, and that was one of the things that we got kicked off of YouTube for. And a, and a month ago, he was also running. <laughs> he was. Yeah, I remember that. He was also a month ago <laughs> running ads for like high level positions for COVID protocols. And he mm. got questioned with his own parliament. Like, why are you still hiring for this uh, six figure job here for a COVID something here? And he had to kind of bullshit his way and explain through that. Oh, well, so you who know, they're putting in, in place is. Yeah, it's a scary. Oh, never, it's not going away. I think we all see that now. I mean, it's, you know, I mean, even the, the mask part of this is the most infuriating because it's like, I mean, all of it really is. I mean, for crying out loud, we can have high level people in their circles acknowledge that, that lockdowns at the very least were not the right move. But it's obvious that it was catastrophic for health care, for mental health. I mean, you just it, an endless list, by the way, exactly what we were saying in the beginning, that they're archaic and they don't work. And, you know, but now here we are. But they're still acting like that's number one step. Come back. Even the WHO said those shouldn't be the first move. But they're all they're all lined up. They're ready to use them the moment that they're told to mass. It's like, and all the science around this stuff is very clear. There's been like seven different peer reviewed studies that have come out. That's like dangerous hurts that, you know, children are being harmed. The, the carbon dioxide levels The I mean, I've, I've listed it off. I did that one minute video of like, seven different peer reviewed studies and it's just bang 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 and they're all new they're all peer reviewed half of them are random controlled trial it's so incredibly frustrating and they just go master back <laughs> it's like based on what who's trusting what science you know it's it's incredible to see but based I, on the fact that they know that the people are going to fall in line that they have enough sheep you saw the line in new york for the friggin monkey pox they have plenty of yeah, willing participants to step up and be a fucking idiot these are deceptive to me, though. Like, here's the thing. It's like we all see the thing they want us to all see. The clip they showed of 45 people in a line. Now, how many? what's 45 people out of 300 million, right? What does it really represent and how many people actually care? You know, we need to stop, in all of us, myself included, falling into the illusion they paint for us. Like, maybe it's real, but at what? Like, what, here's the point that I always point out. Like, let's say... 80% of the country is on our side, at least in the fact that they're like, okay, I'm pumping the brakes here. I don't think these are safe. I'm not sure. I don't buy the propaganda. Maybe they're on one side of their wearing masks, but they're all generally on our kind of our side. How would we know that? Do we think the media would tell us that? Of course not. They would hype the 20%. They would make that the majority. They would keep pointing at it. Now, is that what's happening now? I don't know for sure, but we almost need to act as if, right? Because we would never really know. I believe most people see this. I think the numbers have shown us that the percentages on vaccines, a number of things. Now that may be wishful thinking, but I mean, what other choice do we have at this point?
Well, well, you know, what we're missing is the thing that, you know, listen, as an election integrity activist and going around always saying that I'm going to vote and do this and, and, and analyzing the system to try to change it to make it better, I wouldn't be upset if what Steve said should happen would happen. And that's chaining the doors shut, saying enough is enough until the system is is right. We're not participating. Why aren't we seeing videos of people chanting outside these vaccination locations going enough is enough that's what i want to see that's what we didn't see and that's what we're not seeing enough uh, there's been like one or two incidents of that and they get like labeled as right-wing terrorists because we go in yeah we're gonna get labeled as right-wing we're all a bunch of right did you know i'm not saying that we're just here hanging on out Brian, I'm sorry, I didn't hear you. We're all a bunch of right wingers hanging out right here, right now. Yeah, exactly, which is ridiculous when you think about it. Either you know, I mean, if people would see this. I mean, I'm, I'm pretty aggressively nonpartisan. I think we all have that a little bit, but we're probably seen as leaning a little left. So it's a little ridiculous that it's like, you know, oh, it's conservative, or white ring, right wing. It's it's just a it's a it's a tool they now use. And the frustrating point about it is, is that's going to happen anyway. Like Pasta saying, they're going to do that, so it shouldn't stop our actions. We should still go out there and do it, but we need to start. Th- it's like um. What was that? I forget what group that was that had, they were doing protests. And so when things happened, when they started coming out in the cops, they all just went like this. We don't have any in their hands. We're not pushing back. You know, it's really hard to get that to happen on a large scale. But at some point, we need to start thinking about how they're going to frame us and how we make it obvious that we're not that in real time. You know, mm-hmm. we're not violent. We're not doing anything. They have we, it, it's it has to almost go back to the 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 nonviolent protests of the past where we just sit down and cross-legged sit there, let them beat us up in front of everybody. You know, it's like, we have to just, I, I know I'm really hard about the nonviolence. And I know a lot of people don't agree with that, but man, I tell you right now, they are waiting for that. Oh, They're yeah. just like, please go out there and do something violent so we can make that the case. Cause that's what they want from us. And that maybe doesn't still mean it's not the answer, but I just don't think it'll lead in the right direction. I think they're waiting to pin us all with that for sure. I don't know, man. I, I like what the Italians did with Mussolini. I think a lot of people learned from that, you know. So, so. Well, the question then becomes, though, <laughs> and I think history will always repeat itself. Like, and, and unless you stay vigilant forever, you'll always find people that work their way back into power. But the question becomes, maybe things could have been different if it could have, if there was a less violent transition. I tend to think violent begets violence begets violence. Doesn't mean it can't cause positive change. Doesn't mean it can't lead to something good. But it shows you, it leaves you with the idea that violence is how you change things. I don't agree with that. I, I think it can, but I don't. I think there's a better path. I think at the very least, we need to start thinking in a different direction if we don't want to keep repeating the same things. You know, that's, I don't know. That's Maybe I'm wishful again, but hoping. Um, I got a question, Ryan. Mm-hmm. Uh, how many cops does it take to watch a massacre? <laughs> watch a massacre? Which yeah. one are we talking about now? I, well, they just had that, that report that there were like 400 cops at the well, Uvalde thing. Yeah. Is it Uvalde or Uvald? Um, I, the locals call it Uvalde. Uvalde. Okay. Just but, uh, I, don't, I don't know. I don't know. But they say it. That's local. So I'll go with that. That's, that's um, better. I don't care what the government calls it. <laughs> right. Uh, but well, yeah, uh, 400 freaking cops there's a a zero hedge article ty that we can we can pull for this too and at some point i think Beely's gonna pop in she said she was trying to get out of a meeting and get home um nice. but i'm not i'm not 100 and i have no idea how much time you have ryan but you're welcome to to kick it mm-hmm. um and it, it, you know how we do man. It, it, yeah, yeah. while you can leave when you have to don't feel like you have to stand on ceremony yeah um yeah. But if you have cookies like Victoria like Newland, Victoria please, Newland, please bring them. We'll take them. Yes, um, we will on the Maidan. So the the Texas State House report into the Uvalde shooting um, said the massacre was unable to be stopped due to the systemic failures and poor or egregious poor decision making. Whenever they toss in the word egregious, y- you know that there's some poor schmuck trying to write out the copy that's like why can't i just say colossal fuck up Mm -hmm. why can't i but yeah um so they took a look at the footage scroll down please uh i want to get to the yeah let's roll this clip here real quick oh certainly uh viewers may find some of the footage disturbing so just a warning we're not going to listen to all 10 minutes of footage uh really depicts just that day what officers were facing and the chaos of that day. Shots fired! Get inside! Go, go, go! 
New body cam video released by the Uvalde mayor shows the frantic first moments police arrived on scene at Robb Elementary. This video taken by Uvalde Police Sergeant Daniel Coronado as he made his way inside the building. But within moments, more gunshots. Shots fired inside the building, Uvalde! I'm gonna guess Daniel's a little out of shape. <laughs> a little? Yeah. You should probably stop and get your hand sanitizer first. Yeah. And then they're just gonna hang out. This is a, we can we can pull this for a moment, Ty. Is it 77 minutes, 80 minutes of them just sort of kicking it in the elementary school and around it to the tune of 400 officers while parents are trying to break in and get their kids out while like it takes, you know, one border patrol officer to finally be like, yeah, no, I'm gonna shoot this kid. Yeah, it's just I mean, it, at this point, and this is why we always point out that the very things that they try to scare you away from talking about and asking conspiracy theory, you know, it doesn't mean that there's not things that I would call ridiculous, a uh, subjective grasping claims that you try to connect because you have confirmation bias, right? There's that out there. But to be like, was there something going on here? Right. It, was there something else? There was a, a larger, more nefarious agenda for why they were told not to do certain things. Like the fact that we're even afraid to ask that question is very, very it shows you exactly the problem that we're in today. You can't have objective conversation, especially since we can prove that there has been things like this that have happened in the past. And I'm not even trying to make it. It could be something grandiose about some kind of a, you know, agenda for gun control or all these different ideas. Or it could just be that there's somebody who was running for re-election, let's say, and wanted to do things a certain way. There's a thousand reasons why people make terrible choices for themselves when other people's lives are on the line. So it's incredible to see. There's no way that happens like that if there wasn't something else going on. I mean, what's the logic there? Like, what are they actually arguing? What's their point? Do you guys know what their argument is for why they chose not to take action? No. No, they, I mean, they're they're they're. Can you make it up though? Like they did, they, they didn't want to go into the building. They're until they knew a, what was going on. For they're this. doing a, some kind of a public a, statement. I just don't. I don't know. Things. Yeah, I mean, no. There's a basically like a a hot potato uh, of blame that that's going around, and nobody's really coming out and addressing any individual or anything like that. They're pointing to these nebulous systemic failures or or uh miscues in communication and doggone it if we just weren't if we were all on the same page it probably yeah. wouldn't have happened not Scared like they weren't them. doing active shooter training drills that just week. recently not I mean, like yeah. not like they didn't have that kid on their local police and fbi's radar for more than a year i just got sent an article where uh you know they had interviewed the kid a year ago because he was like walking through town sw literally swinging a dead cat Man, every, like every single time they have contact with the FBI prior to shooting people. Now, yes. you can argue yes. this because they're so yes. diligent and they're out there investigating everybody. Well, if that's the case, then they're terrible at their jobs because every time they don't like how many people are they arresting or doing something about before these things? I'm not arguing they should, but that's not happening. Like there's no body of evidence to show all these kids that we were we got to in time and they didn't have nothing bad happened. I guess it's kind of hard to verify that. But at the same point. Every time you have to start asking these questions if there's something more going on there. And again, you could argue, which I do believe that there's a level of making these things happen because they want to stop them. And then even further nefarious conversations we can get into. But there's also parts of this that could just be incompetence, you know, levels of their, the way that they talk to these people end up driving them to take more action. Or, you know, I, there's a thousand ways you could look at this. None of those conversations are being had. They're not allowed to be had. Yeah. That's the problem I always point out, which is blows my mind. But to the point about them not doing anything, I mean, my God, like bureaucracy, right? It's all, oh, they did it. Their fault. It's not us. It's anybody else but us in the moment. But what does that lead to, guys? And I hate that my mind always goes here because this is where everything seems to be going. What does that lead to? Oh, well, we systemic problems. What do we do? We reimagine the system, right? Let's recreate the way that we do things in a different way that's more equitable and more. That's what it seems that everything in front of us right now is under that redesign. Yeah. And that's, I mean, maybe that's part of it right there. And, and to, to further add to the suspicions, when you start questioning things, they're like, ah, you know what? Let's just knock the school down and move on. That's it. Let's yeah. go. Yeah. Uh, now, right. please. <laughs> well, they did that <laughs> real quick with this school. It's incredible. Real. I mean, 
She's isn't there, I mean, isn't there, I mean, there's a, it's a, it's a point of almost saying like, like literally and figuratively, like, let's just put it away, <laughs> let's just get rid of it entirely and move forward and heal. You know, that's, it's like, so when they decide that we're supposed to start healing, it's like the government's like a heal time. So let's move forward and stop talking about it. You know, like that's how it's just, it, everything is so regimented and controlled and you know what I mean? Like they want, they, they, the government tells you and you initiate when they tell you to start, right? You can care now. You can be outraged now. Now you move forward, you know, and it's it's just so frustrating why people follow their lead. But you know, the government seemed to get a little bit of what they wanted. They did get a small little portion of a gun uh, legislation put through. The red flag laws are now in play. Now, if you're under 21 years old, you can't own a gun. And, and the AR-15 is still on notice now because it's mentioned all the time. Yep. Uh, Tyrone, who's in the booth here, our uh, engineer, was explaining to me how efficient it is and how that gun has been used for, like, shooting foxes that are going after certain things. Was it was it raccoons or something, Ty? What was it? Yeah. And why it's efficient, that gun? I'm, I wasn't saying anything about raccoons. Yeah, that wasn't, that wasn't Ty. About. Okay. Well, in any case, somebody was saying something about they use the they use that gun, the AR-15, to protect their crops to shoot little marmots or whatever. Or the point marmot, that I would make marmot. about that, though, the point I, I it doesn't matter. They, they, we don't have to make. I, we, I I also want to shoot the intruder that comes in my home. Oh no, we're not allowed. To, you know, it's like that. It's it's about having the right to own a gun. It's your constitutional right. It doesn't matter what your reasoning is. It's like the conversation we just had with the guy. You don't get to ask my reason. It's my right. You know what I mean? And that's period. It doesn't matter that there's more high level things in different ways. It's, it's, it, there are laws on the books that if you break those laws, you get held accountable. You, the, the, the more that we encroach on that and go, well, we're just going to let people have guns and we're going to stop them once they shoot somebody. It's like, well, yeah, that sounds bad when you frame it like that, but that's how every law works anywhere. The crime will happen and there's investigatory aspects. You can watch for people that are doing weird. You know, but the problem is you won't ever stop that. Somebody could take a stick, a knife and go stab someone in the eye because they want to. The problem is that they're trying to frame it like that. And the more they go in that direction, it's, it's the same thing with Great Reset and everything else. We need to take action before you think the naughty thoughts. Pre-crime, medical pre-crime. We need to get ahead of everything. It just becomes tyrannical. It already is tyrannical. You know, so I get your point. And it, it's, a fair, it, it, it's the point that they try to make it about all violence, you know, oh, why do they want the guns? It's like, it, it, there's a reason to it that you could argue for hunting, you could argue for that, but it just doesn't matter. And we need to start taking that stance because the, the moment they drive you into the equivocation, we're already kind of losing a little bit, you know, in my opinion. No, I, I, I agree. And I have a, a image of our security force hard at work uh, in Detroit that I'm going to throw in the dock here real quick, hopefully before my laptop dies. <laughs> um, I, I left the charger at home. I, you know, I don't know. I'm dropping it right under the 400 cops thing, Ty. <clears throat> um, by the way, so, he's grabbing that, by the way. Thank you for the shout out. Both, uh, you and Izzy gave me on, uh, Jimmy door show. Appreciate that. Who did? You did. It, what well, did it was, it was Isabel. She, she's the one that said he. it, but you guys were on his show recently and, and she just said T lav and, and Vanessa Beely are being censored. Uh, just oh, like, yeah. Hey, Get mentioned on I'm, I'm blacklisted on their show apparently so well i told her to mention you so give me credit i know the okay. feeling i, I, know, friend, I, I know the feeling <laughs> i do i know right you said steve's name too and it's like hey get it get them out there <laughs> <laughs> do you just see the little panic flash across the eyeballs when our names get wait, dropped wait, wait. he came in and gave me a look like hey i'm like and you know yes steve point getting slow news they go to the same shit <laughs> well you said you're talking about like people that have been like censored this week you know, and it's like, what the fuck, man? Oh, the fuck? Right. You know, it, it doesn't stop. There's a whole new batch of people that are being censured this week. And whether you like oh, them yeah, or, yeah. or not, it doesn't make a difference. It shouldn't be happening. It's yeah, ridiculous. Yeah. There's a, I mean, there's a big partisan guy I just saw get censored. His right guy. I forget his name now. But it's happening all over the place, you know. And that's the thing is that there's there's definitely people. Like, here's a thought I had today, by the way. And then, I'm sorry, he was going to say something. But they're, they're, the whole – think about, like, the QAnon discussion, right? They're the ones – in a really focused way, making that like a like the white supremacy, domestic terrorism building threat, right? They're openly pointing at QAnon when they talk about that. Now, in no way am I asking for censorship. That should always be a standing point. I'm never calling for censorship. But ask yourself why there's an endless amount of QAnon rhetoric all over Twitter, everywhere, talking mm -hmm. about all sorts of things, even stuff you'd point out and be like, that's pretty inflammatory, but they should have a right to say it. Yet, we'll go on Twitter and talk about medical peer-reviewed science and get censored. Yeah. Think about what that shows you guys. They don't, the thing they're pointing at is the threat they want there. They want it to do things. It's that, it's that image, the meme with the stick. 
do something. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> go yeah. attack the Capitol. You know, it's like that's what they want. So go just do a civil them. war. Right. They are. I we were driving back from um the Fuck. getting Connor so some some shoes yesterday, and uh, and he was like, he was like, how come? You know, he was like, how come you can't make fun of white people? And I'm like, you can't because we're not really in power. If you want to know who's in power, you got to figure out who you can't criticize. You know, you can always make fun of white people. That's, yeah. that's a standing and, order for. <laughs> and I'm, I'm like, no, you know, and so like once once you've determined who you're not allowed to criticize, then you can figure out who's who's wielding the actual power. Yeah, Kayla Johnstone made a great point the other day, too. She said, you know, anytime these voting points come into play with the things that are important to the empire, regardless of the side, suddenly there's bipartisan activity. Suddenly everyone comes together, war and, you know, everything else. And and it's it's really stark to see that. It's very clear. Um, Before my laptop dies, we should probably think. Did we show the Detroit cops support. already? Oh, let's do that. Let's pull yeah, that up. By the way. Let's pull that up. This is your security force hard at work. <laughs> we don't know if he's on break or not. Maybe he's on an hour break and he's taking his lunch break and he's napping. And maybe he acts was accidentally exposed to the harmful effects of fentanyl. Maybe. Or he just took a COVID vaccine. That happens to maybe, you know, maybe, out at the drive-in. <laughs> maybe it's Omicron. He does kind of look like he's working on a little Bieber face there. Maybe. Yeah. Maybe <laughs> he's maybe he's getting an on duty blowjob. We don't know. Maybe, yeah. yeah. Maybe. Yeah, we don't know. Yeah, which which does uh uh make me wonder, um because I did when when this was a thread, um I I was like, well, I I don't know if there's a better blowjob than the on at work blowjob. I don't know if there's a better one. I think there's comparable in the in the realm. It's not that good. in the realm. It's not that but good. I in terms of like risky, you yeah, like you, on you on the clock you can't and, relax completely on the That's clock. Right, right. I'm more leaning towards pasta's point. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like you know, like your thought process, man. I hope nobody comes through that door right now. Yeah, yeah. this is awesome. But if somebody opens up that door, it's gonna both both mess up both mess up both of our lives. Excuse me. Right. So, <laughs> so. No, but there's the risk A part of it too. It depends on what kind right. of person you are, I guess, right? <laughs> Steve would That's live for those. He'd be like, yeah, yeah. We'll living on the edge here. I will, I will have sex on somebody else's car in a parking garage. <laughs> I will. Well, I'm get, will. I'm getting paid to have sex here. <laughs> I'm on the clock getting some. That's funny. Jesus. And, and look to the owner of that 1997 Honda Accord. I do apologize. But... <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> A little, uh, you know, those little <laughs> sanitation wipes. Everything comes right out. Don't worry about Didn't it. Didn't have a towel. Didn't <laughs> have a towel. You know. Hey, there's hand sanitizer every 30 feet now, so you're, you're yeah. probably good. <laughs> the only place you can't find hand sanitizer dispensers in a clo close enough to each other is in Uvalde High School, uh, Junior High. Very, yeah. Right. yeah. So Spread out a little bit. Easy. I can't. And then the fucking schmuck goes and puts his hand right back on the wall. Like walks over, does the the ritual thing, and then goes back to his little hiding spot and posts up. Like, yeah, that's like leaving right. a tweet as he as stuff was going down. He's literally on his phone. That's the frustrating part about that is that it's so contradictory. Or that you know the going to sit at a table, you know, make sure it's on while you walk to the table, and then take it out. You know, these things are inherently stupid. Like the very same people that were screaming the common sense part of it all. It's just they just they got real quiet when once these things got really ridiculous and it's like okay just follow along you know it's, it's, it's did frustrating. you did you watch Jim Brewer's uh, stand up I special I, I played a part of it God damn it that was good that was a really good <clears throat> yeah I mean it was just so because you know what I love about his humor is it's not it's not overly intelligent or anything he's just he's just calling calling out the blatant obvious common sense stuff that everybody can laugh at even people that are part of her are like okay okay it's pretty stupid like we can laugh i love the pelican part of when he does the <laughs> it's just so perfect because that's what they're doing they're all blustering like we're so smart and we know everything god if you haven't seen that guys you have to watch that clip Did you guys play it on your show the we we played uh we i think we played like a minute or so of it we did Sounds played good. the seals we had the where he had had everybody out there like barking seals I don't think we played the news cockatoo part, but so the good. news cockatoos are are probably my favorite because yeah. they there's people who actually kind of are bird like yeah. in, in their body structure and their you know facial and bone structure that are 
quite literally out there going, safe and effective. Safe, safe and effective. effective. <laughs> yeah, I, it's, oh, I had so Dr. Good. Fauci. Yeah, yeah. God, and it's so perfect because that, I mean, I, somebody should go back and do like a, uh, what would the word be for? Like count how many times they've said these phrases Oh, and what Jesus. the normal was before and be like, I mean, it's, it's, it's embarrassing, you know, like they're just, it's such a science, safe and effective, safe and effective, like 30,000 times a day. And it just, that shows you that it's propaganda. You wouldn't need to say that constantly unless you were trying to manipulate and convince people, you know, that's the thing it's not about choice, you know, the TV right. or the device has effectively become a prayer wheel where they're just sort of Right. running these things in a spiral uh, and i don't know it's there there's so much actual symbolism involved in it there they've given us actual sigils to like hold and draw power from and you know put right. on our faces as a, Seriously, a that's how they look at it yeah i mean i'm not i'm i'm really not doing a bit here no like, i know the, you, you're even not the, the maga hat was a sigil as yeah. far as that goes, yeah. like it, the very, very deliberate with this imagery and very, very deliberate with the, how simplistic the language is mm -hmm. and how it yeah. actually means absolutely nothing in relation to what they're pushing. We see this every time there's a big focus on an issue like the one that always stands out to me in my mind because it was so in the moment absurd was the Kavanaugh point trust all women it's like believe I mean, come all on, women. guys like there's never been a woman criminal i mean like how fucking excuse me oh, we can cuss in the show how dumb is that you know it's like you so so that person right there it's like so we have to blindly trust that they're making they're not lying i mean the point was they went with it because it was the momentum they wanted and it was about bad guy republicans and the kavanaugh you know but and then of course then the joke is we come later to biden where it's like she's like biden hurt me and it's like well she's lying <laughs> okay. yeah yeah no cool. shit <laughs> yeah. Yeah. believe women no but that's you know, not with joe biden that's terrible yeah. It happens right. every time, though. Safe yeah. and effective. I mean, these things are just mantras. And and if you really break them down, they're usually ridiculous. They're usually hyperbolic is the right point where right to say it, you know? Mm -hmm. And that's because they get people. Maybe there's a point there. Like Desmond, uh, you know, what, what's his first name again? Um, uh, Mateus. Mateus Des Desmond Mateus or Mateus Mateus Desmond, right? Mateus Desmond. Yeah. Yeah. He, the guy talking about um, uh, the mass psychosis. You know, he's mm -hmm. like one of the leading experts. I bet you there's a reason. There's probably some kind of a correlation there to why things need to be almost ridiculous in their own right to be, I don't know. It, 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 that seems to be the case though. It's always hyperbolic when they push it and people buy into it. This is how, this is how people get famous. This right. is how people get, get to be like the, the guy with the freaking piano tie, you know, or like a, a novel, the novelty tie oh, like in a novelty. the shape okay. of a keyboard or something right. like who goes on to be a multimillionaire because he's out there in a bright yellow suit with a bright blue shirt with a keyboard tie on with freaking pink glasses looking just freaking ridiculous. But I, the, you've got to, you've got to go so far over the top because mm -hmm. that's what generates a reaction out of We're so desensitized now. It's why there's so much fucked up porn. It's why the freaking yeah. movies are crazy. Like everybody's so desensitized that you've got to do more and more and more and more and more to get them to react. And we're almost, what 75 years into tv now more something like that we're 30 years into the internet we're almost 15 years into live streaming yeah. you know this, this is the roman empire analogy the best part right you know that we are at this stage and we all i think we all feel that you know we are at a point where our decadence our our gluttonous attitudes you know it, it's it's bad you know everything it's more like you said more and more and more we want to just it, it's bread and circuses that's all the a lot of the stuff the tv the movies the the media team sports high you know reality tv it's all just to get us to focus in <clears throat> on the points they want us to like we were talking about earlier you know and we we hyper focus on roy versus roe versus wade because they say so you know, they dangle the thing. We all jump. I mean, even we talk, you, you kind of, our jobs dictate that we kind of have to talk about the thing, you know, whatever the thing I support the current thing is that yeah, day, yeah. but it happens to all of us. You know, they still dictate very clearly what the focus is and that's, how do we stop that? Yeah. I know it's, it's, it's difficult. The, I mean, we just, the, the, I was talking about this with somebody the other day. I, I really do think that um, time doesn't move in a linear fashion. Like I, this is something that I've been 
kind of wrestling with for the last several years. And the more that I look at it, the less convinced I am that time moves in a linear fashion. And I think that we're currently, we're not in a period of, of revolution and degradation, but we're in a, or we're not in a period of revolution, but we're in a period of ascension or degradation. It's one or the, one or the other. It's a, there, there are people simultaneously ascending and people simultaneously degrading. And that's what the arc of history is bending towards is the degradation or the ascension rather than any sort of, of justice or whatever. And there's enough people, I think, to, I don't know, spiritually lift the planet. I really do believe that there are enough aware people to spiritually lift the planet. It's in terms it's down to getting people talking and getting people together. But I, I do believe that, that the numbers are there. I agree completely, man. And I, I think whether you want to call it spiritual for the people that don't think like that, like at this point's the same. You know, if, if uh, this is my point about getting everybody out there who sees things at least similarly enough that we realize we're being manipulated to just I'm not saying we have to go out and do it. Just say that. Just yeah. make it clear. Stand up on your Twitter accounts. Make it, I don't think they're doing the right thing. Make it clear. If we got that many people enough, that that would do that. Like it, it's it becomes the moment the p that you have a lot of the passive followers that would do that because they think that's the majority opinion. I mean, they would lead it in that way. You know, we can do that. And spiritually, I do agree with that. You know, from a spiritual perspective, we have enough positive, good, you know, people like yourselves that are doing this for the right reasons that care about people. That that needs to be the guiding factors. And I believe most people are like that. Like, like Caitlin Johnstone's point again in the past about how, you know, if we didn't want good things, they wouldn't pretend to be good. They, they pretend to be spreading freedom because inherently we want that. We want people that are good. So if we just show them that real thing, we could effectively change that. But, yeah. but have, you, have you guys heard of the, um, and I'm not an expert on this. But I had a writer that used to cover this a lot, the Yuga cycles of the planets moving. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The idea with that is that we're right now on an ascending cycle where you know it goes through i think it's like copper and silver and gold and the different cycles we're on the cycle right now ascending towards higher uh, uh, um um like another term the kali yuga yes what, exactly yeah but like our our our, our consciousness higher consciousness yeah. like that so we're, we're we're getting past we're starting to see through the lies we're starting to understand things now people may not believe in that but it's an interesting timing correlation and if you look throughout history there's an interesting correlation to you know, the, the dark ages and the, the time of, you know, the technological advances and, you know, whatever else. It's interesting. Mm -hmm. I, I got to tell you, though, it definitely feels different nowadays. Like it definitely yeah. seems like, you know, our backs are against the wall. It's everything seems more urgent. The, you know, this time That's, of acceleration, the last five, six years have been just crazy, you know, and yeah. they're making it hard for us to try and continue to do this stuff, but we got to keep fighting and pushing back. And I got so much, uh, admiration for what you do the way you always go around and jumping because you it seems like almost every other week they're taking something down from you whether it be your paypal account or this twitter account or messing with your yeah. youtube and whatnot you know and well, he, even for some of us he's been demonetized on youtube forever since he started a page they demonetized it right away almost like that we've been like 20 months now going on and you know and i tell people just imagine like them taking away 45 percent, almost 50 percent of your salary and just like that and never give you an explanation no matter how many times you go and ask for an explanation or ask to get remonetized. Uh, right. You know, my mother said, she's like, Craig, are you planning for a rainy day? I said, mom, I don't know how you plan for fascism. I don't know how you plan for this stuff because this is unexpected. And she's even agreeing. Like we, we talk about parlor. We talked about parlor the other day, right? Uh, you weren't there in this one particular panel. I'm sorry, Steve. They were talking about parlor. You know, they kneecapped them. They went away. Now who goes back to par parlor? You know what I'm saying? They're done. And they're doing this to everybody, all these small little particular, you know, voices of reason out there. It's just like some of them go away and they never come back. Mm -hmm. They never. Right. Super, you just got shut down. I mean, it's a different story, but it's, you know, it's sad the way it happened. And the people that could have kept it going after he passed, they just pulled the plug. And I do think there was political motivation there, but, you know, whatever. It's, it's the way it goes. But I'm glad you brought that up, though, because I'm going to probably take off after this. But I wanted to give a shout out to the, the censorship and everything. But to yeah, the last yeah. point about what you're saying with the Yuga cycles, you know, maybe it's just maybe it's the the main reason this has all been so rushed forward. And as it has felt that way is maybe because they see something coming. Maybe they're aware of our raising consciousness and they're like, we need to jam this in now before it's too late. You know, maybe they think the techno technocracy, great reset, you know, singularity direction will stop that. 
You know, these are valid points to make. But now to, to the censorship, thank you for bringing that up. I, I the, the For those that know, uh, Twitter censored me like twice, actually technically three times in the last week. The main account that I was using, which I think it was the uh, the uh, Doodlebug I one, which was my, my assistant's uh, old account, was censored, gone. You know, that was raising quickly. I jumped over to use a new pirate account and they censored that one too. And that one was, it was going... Uh, it was going pretty viral with this mask video that I shared. It had like 6,000 retweets on a really small account. Pull the plug there, right? So now I'm on a th three different accounts out there. You, I mean, I don't know if you guys, I could show them if you want, but I can just give please them to do. you. No, show them, show them to us, please. Uh, let's see. It, it's so crazy because as you're saying all this stuff, it just, uh, Dr. Zelenko passed away. They yeah. shut down all his accounts, like his uh, foundation accounts. To, on Twitter the very next day. It was like, so you're like, hello, this is a foundation. This isn't, you know, Dr. Zelenko's personal account over here. It's a foundation. They didn't care. Shut them down. I mean, that doesn't, it's so telling, isn't it? I mean, that's crazy how quickly that would happen. Um, can I, I just added that if you want to add that, I'll show my screen real quick and I'll show you these. Sure. Yeah, is that okay. I, I didn't ask. <laughs> okay, go ahead. Uh, what do we have to do so we can show that there? Yeah, we're gonna get Vanessa Bealy coming in right now. Can you collect? Yeah, was that without? Yeah, there you go. There we go. And then I'll take out. You guys can talk with Vanessa. But uh, here is uh, one of the accounts. The first one that I'm using. Oh, I got to make sure I refollow everybody. Um, Pirate Vagabond. For those who don't know, again, we do the TLAP Pirate streams, Pirate channels. So I've got I've got like ten more T Twitter accounts. People that have given me, they're in the wings, you know. So follow everything that's got Pirate Vagabond TLAP in it. Follow them because I'm going to be jumping around. But this is the one I'm using, probably the primary right now. They just deleted the Tennessee one that I used. Uh, After Hours Podcast is letting me use theirs as well. So I appreciate that. Thank you. That's going to be one. And then this is the one that I'm using on my computer, essentially Whack a Mole 3000. So for just just by because they're on there, I'm using these three pretty Why much. Why do right. you use whack a mole? Is it, yeah, is it, is, does that have to do with the whole vaccine, the COVID 19 vaccine? Because then once they start creating a vaccine, there's a new variant and you're now just playing whack a mole. Is that, was that, no, you do that? again, to clarify, these aren't my accounts. I'm not okay. making these accounts, right? Twitter, okay. YouTube, any of them. People are making, wow. hey, That's use right. my account. And they, a lot of them will make a name or change the name so it's something vagabond related. But some of them don't, you know. Like my YouTube channels, just like Jane, whatever. I'm just using these random YouTube channels, and I'm still getting thousands of views. You know, I'm trying to show people that we can circumvent their censorship if we just build our communities offline, off their platforms. You know, but uh, those three accounts follow me, guys, because we're they're going to keep censoring us for peer-reviewed science because that's what it was. For, for those who don't know, I literally shared Dr. McCullough speaking about a peer-reviewed study that he was pointing at on the screen and then it linked the peer-reviewed study. They censored that. Peer, me, medical misinformation to share peer-reviewed science, guys. Think about how crazy that is. Doesn't mean we should trust the peer-reviewed science either, but that's yeah. what they tell us we should be trusting. Last thing I want to point out, thank you for having me on the show, guys, as always. I just added this to my side of my website, lastamericanvagabond.com. It's a new kind of like little portal here to support T-Lab, donate. You can use all sorts of different ways to donate. I'm trying to get crypto on there as well. But anyway, up top, there are all my donation pages for Subscribestar, Cash App, and so on. You guys know we're all aggressively under attack. I rarely shout that stuff out. You know, I rarely uh, yeah. push, the, you know, donate and so on, buy the shirts. But we're all under attack. It's, it's crazy. Yeah. I mean, they're coming after our revenue. Yeah, we need um, all the help we can get. Buddy. You want to go ahead and bring Beely up so so she can say <laughs> hi to Ryan. Hey, hi! I better put the lights on. Actually, it's I'm, getting a bit darker. <laughs> I'm on the way out. I just wanted to say hi, and I heard you got censored as well. So it's just nonstop, oh. right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, whatever. Oh, another day, right? <laughs> content creator. All right. Well, it's nice to you see guys. you, stranger. Get in touch. I know, I know. I gotta have you back on, right? Yeah. <laughs> I love talking with her. You guys have fun. I, I thank you for having me on, guys. Ryan, thank you so much, my friend. Ryan, Take I want care, Ryan. next time you come on. I want to talk a little elections too, as well. We have something in there. We're probably not going to get to it today, but I, 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 I haven't got a chance to talk to you about this. I almost got thrown out of Freedom Fest for an election integrity uh, panel Freedom that was Fest. on there. Just a joke. Just a joke, but we have to have serious conversations about elections. Both shows. I'd like to have you on when it gets closer because you know my Please. stance were very different. So I'd love that. That'd be great. Please. All right, guys. Have a good one. Uh, take care, Ryan. Take care, Ryan.